Could it be high noon for the high street? Each week, over 100 shops are biting the dust. The retail expert, Mary Portis, is warning that UK high streets have reached crisis point. More than one in seven shops stand empty. The government asked me, Mary Portis, to take a look. If you take away the heartbeat, the high street, you take away more than shops. You take away a community. It's a massive challenge. Some say it's impossible, but I believe it's worth fighting for. This isn't a makeover. This isn't a rags to riches. Oh, Mary with her magic wand. This is reality, and this is going to take a few years. So I came up with a 28-point plan, the Porter's Review, and the government asked towns to bid for money to help revive their high streets. That's the goal. That's the dream. Nearly 400 towns applied to become a Porter's pilot, all desperate to make their high streets better. This series tells the story of three of them and how I tried to help. First up, Roman Road in the east end of London. You look better than what you do on the telly. I don't think I look that on yeah, the telly. Yeah. I thought you were only 32. Oh, no, no. I'm nearly 100. <laughs> a high street stuck in the past and dying on its feet. I've come into a cave. I'm just wanting to sell the place and get shot of it. It's a very busy shop, right? What do you mean, it's very busy? Well, it's not busy with customers. No. Can turning round the market help to regenerate an entire street? I believe if we get that market right, when people start to come down this road, business builds on the back of it. You don't look at all like you, you agree with me at all. I don't. Just because she's Mary Porter doesn't mean it's right. High streets used to be teeming with people. Neighbours would gossip with neighbours. Everyone knew their shopkeepers. And the tills just didn't stop ringing. It breaks my heart to see what they've become. Devastated by parking charges, out-of-town retail parks, the internet. When I wrote the Porter's report, it was more than an economic issue on businesses going away. It was about a social issue. If you take away the heartbeat, the high street, you take away more than shops, you take away an infrastructure, a web, a community, a support function. If we see a future that's going to be about us all being online or driving to an out-of-town supermarket, what's going to happen to the high street? Where do you go? Listen, my name's Wally. I know our high streets will never be the same again, but I do believe they can be a new kind of destination, starting with Roman Road in Tower Hamlets, which lies in the heart of the east end of London. 20 quid for that one, darling. You lie back and your legs go in the air. There will not be legs in the air. Over the last few years, money's been pouring into the area. Roman Road's just a stone throw away from the Olympic Stadium and two miles away from the fat cats of Canary Wharf. The problem is, the shops and market of Roman Road High Street aren't reaping the benefits. But that wasn't always the way. In the 70s, it was all very buzzy. Everyone came from all over because they wanted to go to the Roman Road. It was, I suppose, like Kings Road, Carnaby Street of the East End. It was a fashion parade here on a Saturday. You didn't know who you fancied the most, the mum or the daughter. They were all gorgeous, you know what I mean? These slits, I promise you, will not cling to your knickers. I can't promise you I won't. But those days are long gone. I am one of the original EastEnders, and it really upsets me to see the way this market has finished up. Roman there is crap and shit. Things are so bad that during the Olympics, it was even left off the tourist map. It is ridiculous that Roman one was left off the map. I can't believe they do such a thing. At the end of the day, still, Roman Road need a facelift. Unfortunately, Roman Road town team didn't win their bid for government money to help to pay for a facelift. However, I feel it has real potential. Why wouldn't Roman Road work? Because actually what I've started to see as I've driven through here, there's a whole new kind of tribe moving in. 
So this place is thriving. The Olympics being here made this very hot. You know, right behind me, that's the Olympic Village. There's newness coming in. It's not dead, that's for sure. As part of my Portas review, I wrote about the potential in regenerating markets up and down the country. Yeah, good, you? Yeah. It can bring in a new footfall which will boost all the shops in the area too. What's so brilliant about markets, and I will say this time and time again, people come out, people socialise, that's what High Street should be about. These are the heartbeats of communities. m and £3. They're big lady knickers. Giorgio Armani rip-off pants, look at them. It's the old, cheap fashion, you know, market. Oh, my God, I've just gone back to the 60s. Housewife, cash and carry. Shows you how much they've moved on, isn't it? Come on, it's all cheap there, ladies. Pot some pants today. Come on, it's all going cheap. You had it, darling. Yeah, you. Yeah, good bags, yeah. I'm watching the entertainment. There's no one to entertain. I know, where are they? Oh, look, here's some, come on. They're all hiding, isn't it? I know. Cups there, only a pound fifty each or four for a fiver. I love markets. And you can tell that this was once great. And it feels a little bit faded, a little bit tail end. You know, it needs love. Is it? Yeah. Why would you choose that as your logo? It just looks like an old poo on a stick, doesn't it? The Roman. The Roman what? The Roman Road is one straight road with the market and shops at the top end, with more shops at the bottom end. So I've got a really simple plan how to help this road. I'd like to create what is known in retail terms as an anchor at either end. And these are destinations, shops or any type of retail spaces that people will travel to go to. I believe that the market down this end of the Roman Road can become a really good new anchor for the high street here. In the old days, when they planned high streets or shopping centres, they have anchors at either end. So Marks and Spencers might be one, Debenhams the other, places where people always trusted and went to. We don't have those anymore. So what are our new anchors? What are our new magnets? What's going to draw people in? And I believe if we get that market right, we're going to draw people coming down this road. When people start to come down this road, business builds on the back of it. Now all I need to do is to find a shop that can be an anchor at the bottom end of Roman Road. Oh, my goodness. I've come into a cave. How long have you been physically in this shop? Oh, I've been physically here since uh, 1954. What's all that string hanging up? Well, this was when it was a toy shop. So, so that bit of string's been hanging up Those there. Those bits of string have been there since nine, since the war. And this was a very busy company, but people just do not visit Rome and Rome. I've given up completely. I'm just wanting to sell the place and get shot of it. Hey, look, you look like you're having a happy time. Can I sit down? I've had a yeah, walk down the street. Take a seat, take a seat. I thought it had been busy around here. You hardly get customers, because there's nowhere to park. You have to park on the main road, and then they come and clamp your car and take it. So you can't shop here? So you can't do no shopping. My brother leave the West Midlands to take something down here for me. This was 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. And he ended up paying £175. Blimey, if that's happening at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll be able to shop the, during the three day. 3 o'clock in the and morning. And is it nice? Is, what's the people like around here? Because the guy at the road said he wouldn't put his stuff in the window, in his shop window, in case it gets broken into. That's true. That's what true, because, because um, there's a lot of thieving going on around here, but not really, not from the, the, the um, residents. It's outsiders that when they break into the store down there and they took everything, people having shoes that cost £130. I've seen them with my eyes. And they were all left foot, not one pair. Took the oh, stuff they took the shop. left yeah. foot shoes because yeah. they were the ones in the window. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. Well, blimey, that wasn't a very good uh, riot then, was it? If you're just going hobbling off with your left foot. Yeah. I tell the truth, I don't care who won't fix with me. Oh, well, girls, thanks for the insight. Looking for my anchor shop, I've got my eye out for something just a bit quirky. Because the trendy crowd moving in here won't be wanting the big chains. Every shop that I'm going to, there's someone more batty than the next. Hello, I'm Mary. Hello, I'm Jeanette. So, do, do you look at my blue room? I do sometimes. I'm going to take it off now. No, 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 I can't remember <laughs> it. It's just... <laughs> Listen, you've got a blue one, I've got a red one. Well, mine's not a wig. <laughs>
Oh, my God. <laughs> Have you touched this in 20 yeah, years? Yeah, I do. I clean it up and I move it round and, yeah. I mean, it's a very busy shop, right? What do you mean it's very busy in here? Well, it's not busy with customers, no. is it? It's busy with just a lot of stuff, no. isn't it? No. Have you taken anything today? Um, eight pound. Eight pound. Eight pound and we're three o'clock in the yeah. afternoon. I mean, what do I say? It's, it's like, that is just... Why would you bother? Why would you bother? And those false flowers in that hideous bucket. Who is coming in for those? They're actually very good sellers. <laughs> Come to pick fire oh, you up. Have it. Yeah, um you've come to pick up a fire? Yeah, I've come to pick my fire up. Do you shop here a lot? I live local. Yeah. Um it's nice to come over to to talk to Jeanette. Yeah. And that and have a bit of fun and get a bit of educational actually. She's very clever in what she does. Mary needs a Valium after seeing the shop, Bev. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Thank you. See ya. Bye. They meant to go on the road, Thank though. You. <laughs> oh, I just, I do need a sit down. I can't tell you. You couldn't make this up. But despite all the junk, I think Jeanette has the potential, with a bit of help, to bring new customers to the high street. This part of the East End has become a bit of an epicenter for lovers of retro. Who would you generally say? are your customers. I've got the local people, I've got students, there's a lot of people in transit. Then I do have a lot of the people that like the retro things, that who would go to Brick Lane or Shoreditch so who come here. why don't you target them? I mean, why aren't you looking at that? They, this is an area that we know is going through change and target that growing customer base who likes retro. Yeah, but I don't think that I would be able to survive on just them. But they're the ones with the money. What we've got here is we've, we've got junk with not, some good bits. What? Yeah, but they're not the ones that are going to come every day. They're more my weekend customers. I genuinely think that the audience who have moved into this area, 30 pluses, with young families who want to do their homes up, who aren't interested in buying new, who want vintage. If I get her shop right, I know that will kickstart other new businesses coming onto this high street. Roman Road in the East End of London is undergoing a huge house building programme. In the last 10 years, the borough's population has increased by a third. But while there's new money moving into the area, footfall is down on the high street. Cheat, cheat, cheat today, come on. I believe there is a potential gold mine of new customers sitting right on the doorstep. If I can draw them onto the high street by getting this market right, the shops will benefit too. First, I'd like to know what all the residents, new and old, want for their high street. Look at you, you glam oh, We always are down here. Where'd you get your gear from? I need a bit of this. Oh, I'm always, <gasps> I'm always like it. Do you? Yeah. you? Have you all shopped the market? Then? Yeah, down here since I was a little girl. What Definitely. would you have in here? I don't know, too many clothes, but they've all got the same stuff. Yeah. So what would you, you know, want? I don't know, a bit upmarket. I like to see top grade, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, top not looking grade. scruffy. How many years have you lived in the area? 40 years. Oh, I thought you were only 32 and you've no, lived it for no, 40 years. No, 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 no. I'm nearly 100. <laughs> Take care. But it's not all down market. Some stores are clearly making the effort. Lindy Lou's Boutique. You've tried the rest now. Come and get the best. Are you Lindy Lou? I'm Lindy Lou, yeah. Are you? How are you, Mary? Hi. Okay, nice nice to, to meet you. you. Sorry, I've got freezing hands. Yours looks like a touch of glamour it in the It is. It's a touch of class. It is a touch of class. It takes me hours to do it. Does it? How long does it take you to set up in the morning? Uh, three hours. <laughs> one of it is one load. If I have a bad day, it's not through want of trying. Sorry, you OK there, babe? Lindy Lou's worked on the stalls for 32 years, and the market's been around since the 1860s. This is the first fruit in the road today. For most of its history, it's provided for working-class customers. 
That is what we call a reject. How reject. much is this? Five pound fifty, darling. I think this market has been successful over the years because it meets the requirements of the ordinary working class people insofar as the prices suit their pockets. Uh, obviously, middle class, upper class people, they deal at the big stores like Harrods, etc. <laughs> Today, a new breed of East Ender is moving in, priced out of other parts of London and attracted to the area's new trendy image. But, like many of Britain's down at Hill High Streets, the Roman Road hasn't adapted to its changing demographic. I think what's so interesting here is you can tell it's coming up. Look, flats, every, you look above the shops and you're starting to see people moving in. They want to come down, they want to shop local. And this would be an ideal place to have a thriving market that's really relevant to all these people who are moving into the area. Whilst the top end of Roman Road, the market, has been getting tattier, I can see just 100 yards away, at the bottom end, a couple of smarter new shops have opened up, targeting these new locals. Do you guys use the market at all? Um, not very much. It's a bit. There's not. There's not much on there. And market bit is the worst end of the street oh, <laughs> sort of thing. And you do walk. We like when we first started walking around there. You push your buggers and you're like, really? They're all very friendly. They all yeah. chat to you down there, yeah. which is really nice. And they've obviously been there for years and years. The stuff that they're selling on the market is all a bit. Quality-wise. Yeah, it's not something you buy. What would you want on there? Definitely a bit more food. There are a couple of good stores of uh, fresh, fresh fruits. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. What's happened here, and it's happened in many towns, is everything's changed, new communities have moved in, and they don't know how to engage with the new communities. And the whole point of a market is you should be able to mix all different social groups. And if you had some great little food stores, or coffee being served, I honestly think you'd get some of those mummies wandering down here. And then I think it's a case of peppering in new stalls and it'll start to take a life of its own. They just need a vision. It's adapt or die. But make no mistake, this isn't just about gentrification. I don't want to alienate the old customers like Reenie Clark. I tell you, it's a good market. Yeah. You look better than what you do on the telly. That's nice. Everybody says that. I don't think what I look like on the yeah, telly. Yeah, you look really just had a baby. Yeah, my partner, not me. I didn't. My partner. Uh, I'll bet you're glad it ain't you. Yeah, I... <laughs> I've had two. Have I've you? had two you myself. You would think it, would you? Thank you. This well, is a stall, though. Well, it's very well, good to me. It gives me loads of clothes. Yeah, you wouldn't get that if you went to a chain shop, would you? No. They wouldn't know you, would they? No. No. But they know you. Stop Hold my mate. arm. Let's see, let me see that. You're my mate. Oh, all right then. <laughs> this is what we have to think about. How do we create vibrant places where you get a real mix of cultures that can live side by side and enjoy the same things, you know? There should be no reason why Roman Road can't take off. It's surrounded by examples of some of the capital's finest markets, Columbia Road, Brick Lane, Spitalfields, and just two miles away, Broadway Market. Just nine years ago, Broadway Market was like the Roman Road, dying on its feet. It took a good few years, but they managed to revive it by turning it into a foodie paradise. Instantly, you walk here, it's packed. People are spilling onto the streets. Lots and lots of street food. The smell is fantastic and it feels alive. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you. This is a brilliant example of a market. Everybody's benefiting. The cafes are packed, the restaurants are packed, the stalls are packed. It's just brilliant. And it's the best example I've seen in a, in a very, very long while. If we can get that into the Roman, there's no reason that it can't be like this. No reason at all. I believe Roman Road Market should tap into the street food trend. But Tower Hamlets Council have previously turned down any application for food licences. I'm trying to get them to reconsider without much luck. This is, um... This is the sort of bureaucracy that just puts me over the edge. You know, my team have probably sent 20 
notes to people in the council, telephoned constantly and not even getting a reply. The thing is, I honestly genuinely believe that Roman Road could be amazing. And here we are saying we want to help, absolutely free of charge. We'd love to talk to you about what we want to do because we need the council's support. And got, getting absolutely no response, just a big blank brick wall. I mean, if we're getting completely blanked and I'm putting my name in, what would you do if you were the average guy on the street? You'd just give up. I'm packing up because it's no bloody good. <laughs> yeah. It's been very quiet. Traditionally, the council have run Roman Road Market in consultation with the traders, but recently a group of local residents set up an action group to have more of a say. Hey, Liam, you right? I want to lobby the council on their behalf. Josh? So you are locals, right? Yeah. It's like a small village. We know everybody here. We wanted to get a change, you know. There's a lot of potential here. Uh, a lot of the shop owners want something to happen. We want traders, the shops, the market to listen to residents a bit more, to work with us, so actually they can sell things that we want to buy. We can make the Rome Road together a real success again. That's so brilliant. I mean, that, that really just excites me because that's how it should be. It should be run like a business. One of the big challenges here is Rome Road used to be a fantastic, famous fashion market, and people would get dressed up to the nines to come down on a Saturday from Essex, from London, yeah. to buy their fashion. And a lot of people remember that, and they want to recreate that. I think those days have gone. Yeah. I think the market has changed, and I think some of the traders need to think seriously about that. The Roman Road's got a lot of potential. It just needs someone like yourself, another bit like Josh and me to kind of inject that enthusiasm. It just excites me that there are great people like you in the communities who want to make a difference. Nice to see you guys. I love that locals are getting involved. I can't wave a magic wand and transform their high street for them. All I can do is make a start. My long-term plan is to make the market an anchor or destination at one end of the street and Jeanette's shop another anchor at the other end. If they can attract footfall, all the businesses in between will benefit too. So we'll break this one up, that one. I've asked Jeanette to clear out two-thirds of her junk to make way for a more curated collection of vintage pieces. Someone will probably come and want that tomorrow. I believe get it right and one shop can have a domino effect on the whole street. Oh, my God, Jeanette, what the hell are you done in here? Well, it's just where I'm getting rid of everything. Mary said that I should get rid of two-thirds of what's in here. can't believe how much room has actually been made here. I really can't believe. It just shows you, though, doesn't it, if you put your heart to it, how it can actually look in here. I'm not getting rid of it much more. I won't have anything left to sell. It's just standing in here in a shell. If you keep doing what you're doing, and you're, if, you know, you might find that pot of gold at the end of it. Uh, someone was looking for a grater the other day. I found it. There you go. That's the manana. I can see Jeanette still needs convincing. Hello, Sara. Hi. So I want to introduce her to a new local, Sara, who I believe should be her target customer. Looking around your house like some of your gorgeous pieces, you've picked and chosen all the little pieces that just reflect your personality. In. Yeah, and also my other half, Jeff, he's like impossible. When he gets a bee in his bonnet as yeah. well, he has to have stuff. So he's gone mad about taxidermy recently. Look at that, the fox. <laughs> I think that is just brilliant. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but something as camp as that, I could just see in Jeanette's shop. Here we are, just a spit throw away from your shop, and look at this. I just don't see those people. I have been into your shop, and the thing is, I'm a bit like, oh, can I, can I really be bothered to look? Yeah. Because yeah. I know that I'm going to have to really look in it's your an shop. Hour's work. And that's something I haven't got the time. Yeah. I just want to pop in and go, oh, that's nice. We could do with one of those. To start making change, I not only need the traders and locals on side, I also need the council. I want to convince them that the street food I saw in Broadway Market could work here. 
After endless emails, I've finally been granted a meeting with Tower Hamlet's head of services, Andy Bamber. Hello. Hello, Mary. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. What? At last, I say. At last? Why at last? Oh, my God. Oh, we sent so many emails through to the council and didn't get a response. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, the, the only time I was warned was about sort of with 24 hours' notice, and my diary is normally solid. I think we are reactive. I think we are quick, but okay. I just think it's been a breakdown in communication. Right. OK, let's start in a nice way, then. OK. For me, when I stand here and I look, and the entrance to the market just doesn't feel like a wonderful gateway in an entrance. And I love the idea of starting off here with some great breakfasts, you know, some little sort of places where you can have a fry up and actually make it a sort of outside community where people can sit and eat and then wander down into the market. Fry ups? Yeah, fry ups. A healthy eating agenda? Or a healthy, a good fry up, but a good, a healthy, a healthy a good English breakfast where people can come in. Like, if you think of some of the great markets, like Borough Market, you go in and get a really good big bat. Slightly different area, though, isn't it? Yeah, but at the moment, we've just got very low end fashion and nothing else. I love the idea of mixing great food with fashion for what I call also the new locals who are all up that end. There's a lot oh, yeah. of new people in here that this just isn't relevant for. And I don't want to alienate the people it is relevant to as well. I want to mix the two. And that's what makes a really good thriving market. It's just how we go about it. While Andy considers my proposal to increase footfall by licensing new food vendors, I'm taking Jeanette to Paris. I want her to learn how to turn her shop into a chic destination store for Roman Road. This place is called the Marché aux Pousses, which is basically the flea market. What I want from you, Jeanette, is for you to start picking pieces and have a vision for what your shop could be. Now, instantly, you've said you like this, don't mm. you? Why do you like that? And this is actually real... There's a massive growth area in this uh, French I, I furniture. I just love it. The, the shape, the carvings the size of it. Right. Ça coûte combien? Pour le toit. Ça coûte Pour le toit. combien? 900. 900. Ah, Merci. Uh, as bad as my shop might be, I'm going to be straight now. I'm not a fool, and I know that I can't spend 900 on that. No, we're not and talking 900 no. on that. It was the first piece of furniture right, we looked but... at, but what I'm saying to you is you need to up the level. Because yes. if we don't move on, we're just going to be left with the same old scraps and you just filling it with stuff that's house clearance. You don't look at all like you, you agree with me at all. I don't. I don't. Not right here, not right now, I don't agree. I, I just don't feel that I... I wouldn't want to... I personally wouldn't want to bring a van here and fill it up with this stuff, cos I just don't feel I'd be able to take it back and make anything. That's... That, that's what I feel right now. OK. I was tasked by the government to look at Britain's failing high streets and think about how to reinvigorate them. It felt like a near impossible task, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm in Roman Road High Street where the offering to date has been a bit pants. Come on, it's all going cheap today, come on. Come on, guys. I'm trying to give people a reason to visit this high street again. I'm starting with Jeanette's junk shop, trying to turn it into a destination vintage store. I want to do Jeanette's shop because I believe that there is a market in this area for brilliant recycled retro furniture. We've seen it happening in Brick Lane. If I get her shop right, I know that will kickstart other new businesses coming onto this high street. To compete with the Brick Lane retro shops, I've taken Jeanette to Paris to source some more unique pieces. We're meeting Stuart Patterson, fellow Londoner and vintage furniture dealer. Stuart, hi. Good to see you. Yep. And well. this is Jeanette. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, Stuart. Hi, how are you? Jeanette and I Hello, have been Stuart. having a little... Because she says this is all too expensive, which some of the pieces that we've been looking at are. You have a shop in a cool bit of London, your East London. Yeah, but where I am isn't that cool. And I sell from a market stall in Peckham. Well, so there's a good comparison. Yeah, and yeah. Autom automatically, yeah, by virtue yeah. of it's a market stall, people expect better prices. Mm. So you can be doing 
some of the bits I'm doing more expensively because people understand. Peckham. Mm, he's Peckham. 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 Yeah, well, when you say Peckham. Yeah. <laughs> does that reassure you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> what do you think, Jeanette? What do you think? <laughs> Go on, buy me. Change the image of your shop. <laughs> Listen to Mary. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I spotted a piece of taxidermy, a little hidden deer head. Oh, yes. I thought that's quite an easy thing to start with, mm -hmm. to introduce into the shop. How much, please? Best price. Best price. Best price, uh, 80 euros. 80 euros. 80 euros? Yeah. What do you think? I did sell a pair, um, very similar, for 250. And I had lots of people wanting them. Okay. So I will take this one, please. Do you believe it, though? Do you really believe that you'll do that, sell that? Yeah, I know yeah. I'll sell that. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, believe <laughs> We've that. started with your taxidermy. Yeah. <laughs> to me, with those earrings in and a necklace wrap would sum up the style. The wonderful, slightly witty, irreverent, kitsch, camp fabulousness that will be your shop. Yeah. OK, you can have your own Thank bed. you very much. Bargain, <laughs> Clermont! What's bargain in French? Très bon marché. Well, wonders will never cease. I might just be getting somewhere with Jeanette. <laughs> Back in London, there's more good news. I've managed to convince the council that food stalls should be allowed to operate on Roman Road's Saturday market to bring new customers in. Never mind moving mountains, Andy's agreed to move the bench to create a new food area. Oh, who says councils don't work quickly? That's amazing. Well, there you go, you see? That's fantastic, we're moving the bench. We are going to have a great little food empire here. I love the fact that there was a way of making change, and I, and I just like that, in a week. The council have also agreed that I can source the right mix of stores the residents are after. Don't worry, we'll be putting something much better here. Rather than them picking who's at the top of the council waiting list. To get this market to work now, we need to run the market like a business and in a very different way. We need to curate and we need to pick the right store holders with the right product for the people who live locally. I need to trial this as soon as possible, so I've already found a potential street food business. We're feeling uh, pretty excited. nervous at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. The original Fry Up boys have worked in the restaurant industry for years, and I want to see if they have what it takes. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. Never cooked for a celebrity before. So. No. What are you doing yeah, this morning, Tom? Of... Cooking for Mary Porter's. As you do, yeah. yeah my sister That's... loved that. <laughs> she absolutely <laughs> loved it. All right, guys, the kitchen's yours. What do you fancy for breakfast? What's your thing? We were thinking about doing Eggs Benedict today, because everyone loves Eggs Benedict. Except for me. <gasps> what do you think to Roman Road, guys? We feel like we could bring something a bit sort of different to the market, maybe a younger crowd. That's yeah, what that's what I'm thinking. looking at. No one else is doing cooked breakfast on the streets. The whole point is that we want to be making this stuff mm -hmm. fresh and, and pretty much to order. Markets were where businesses 50, 60 years ago started. Exactly, yeah, yeah began. And, this, and that, this... that was taken away. And now I love the idea of a couple of guys like you starting your business on the market. We've applied to so many markets and they're so oversubscribed. I mean, I, I would defy anybody to look at YouTube and say, we wouldn't want that. what that looks like. Two little boobers on the floor. Nice. Yeah. I love the fact that this is brilliant, classy food. That's what we should be doing down there. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. Really great. The council have agreed to give the new Saturday food area a 10-week trial that they will make permanent if successful. However, Discontent is brewing amongst some of the local business owners. Hi, Mary. How are you? They see the new food stalls as potential competition. Everyone is starving for business. If there was to be some kind of a marquee, just selling tea, coffees, even if it's specialised, it will be taking away some of the businesses from the, the, the shops within the Roman world. I just feel that it's um, sufficient people selling tea and coffee from Percy English to the Roman here. 21 establishments, I think there is. 
and uh, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. I've got two options yeah. to do. I've got an option that says keep it as it is, and I think it will slowly wither on the vine. Yeah. I, I do. Mm. Or I make it relevant to a new audience, but keep the mix of the old with the new. Are they five pound each or two for eight pounds? No? I'll take one of those, please, mate. In that colour? And they're not the only ones questioning my vision. Don't like it, you can always bring it back. Oh, you know I... Despite our trip to Paris, Jeanette is continuing to have doubts. Right. Thanks Thank a lot. You. What's Mary doing for you at the shop? We're apparently um, changing and um, going a bit upmarket down there now. Raise the prices? She apparently thinks there's people around here that's going to pay the money. I've been down here a long time and I now work to the magic prices, the 5 or the 10, the 15. I'd like to see what she, what she says, what she does. Well, you'll see me afterwards and I'll let All you know. Right. Thanks for that. See you later. Bye. Bye. Just because she's Mary Porter's doesn't mean it's right. Well, I'm determined to convince Jeanette I am right, or her shop won't become the anchor we need to bring new customers to the Roman Road. Jeanette's Mary. I need to talk to her at home. Blimey! Wow. I can feel you've got into Jeanette's face as I come round here. It's... Okay, okay. I won't. It's amazing. It's like a touch of a Versace hotel <laughs> in a tower block. Quite blown away by it. Oh, God, it's made me feel really happy seeing this. Really happy. I so get you from this. That's what you want your shop to be, isn't it? What? We're still on the same thing. I just don't know. I know you've got more confidence in the area. I just... I just, that's what I need, is the confidence in the people. There's loads of people that would love stuff like this. You have to bring this alive and bring this into your shop. OK. I never would have dreamt you'd have had a home like that. Not from what I saw in that shop before. And it's a point of view. It's mad, it's camp, but it is a point of view, and you need to be confident to do that. So. I'm just really hoping that she will be able to take that confidence and bring that to the shop and sell that to the people of East London. Hi, yeah, you all right? I'm in the Roman Road in the East End of London, Morning. trying to give people reasons to visit their high street again. Is that yours, Tom? Yeah. What's happened there? It looks like it's like a wet pair of old knickers, though, is the way that's hanging. Morning. I've been working on a plan to turn Jeanette's junk shop into a destination vintage store at one end of the high street and creating the beginnings of a destination food market at the other end. Hopefully, all the businesses in between will benefit from the new footfall that walks up and down between the two. Today, it's the first Saturday to launch my new food stalls, but the weather's threatening to put a right old dampener on proceedings. People don't really come out in the rain. But... You never know. Maybe they've heard about us new marketeers. I'm trialling some new stalls inside the market to target these new trendies moving in. I found some young designers selling everything from homewares to fashion. And I'm using the new food area to entice them in. There's a baker, a gourmet burger joint, and of course, the fry up boys. Mm. It's great that we finally got in because. We've, we've struggled so much to get a pitch, but it's all happened so fast since Mary's involvement. It's been amazing. These small changes can start to make a difference, and it will take time. But I believe if you get the market right, all the shops will benefit. Morning. There's fashion, flowers, food, all the Fs. I'm going to think of a few Fs this morning in this weather. Morning. And every detail is important, whether you're selling in a market or in a shop. Come on, we need to stretch that tight, though, don't we? And at the risk of sounding like the queen of shops, presentation is key. Do you have to keep them in these wrappers? They're horrible. You would never go into a shop and oh, see a bit of old plastic codged around it. Come on, they just look terrible in those. They look cheap. 
You know, it's just very simple stuff that starts to make this look more elegant. Right, what is beautiful in Urdu? Hupsurud. Hupsurud. Well, Hupsurud. That's what we need, is a bit of Hupsurud on this department. The new stores seem to be drawing in the new East Enders. By understanding the needs of your ever-changing local demographic, other markets around the country could do this too. It'd be really nice to get some fresh ideas and some fresh On products in as well. So. Looks good. So if we get it right, you'd come back? Oh, absolutely, yeah, definitely. We live down, down Roman Road. At the road, other end of Roman Road, we just thought we'd come along. I'll put these little stalls out, have a look at those. They're yeah. great. OK. Well, we saw food? the food ones, ones, ones at the end like of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. All right, lovely yeah, to see you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> just small changes, a completely new face that you're getting down here by doing that, you know, which is brilliant. At the other end of the Roman road, Jeanette's ready for the big opening of her French-inspired boutique. This is pretty stunning. Gone are the hordes of junk trying to appeal to everyone and appealing to no one. In its place, carefully curated pieces brought in from France and selected from the best of her previous stock have been used to dress individually themed rooms. They've done an extraordinary job on this. I the fact that it just breathes in here, it is, I think, one of the most beautiful little interior shops and of the moment. It looks lovely, it's amazing. But now we have to see that this is going to work. That's, I know I'm always going to be on the negative, but six months' time I might say, yes, it's fantastic. And I hope that I'm saying that because I wouldn't want to go back to what I had before. That unit there, where was that before? Because it's stunning. Which was here, which no one wanted to buy. And how much are you going to be selling that for? Today, I suppose, if someone gave me £200, I'd be happy. Brilliant. Brilliant. And it looks like it's worth more. You'll sell it. Yeah. You'll sell that within a couple of weeks. Believe you me. Believe you me. Honestly. <laughs> well, there's certainly some new faces in here. It looks a bit different, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? It's lovely. It's I mean, it doesn't even look like the same shop, does it? <laughs> so it's somewhere you would buy your home stuff from? Absolutely. I, I've been admiring this set. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. I shall spread, spread the word for you. All right. This has moved what was a junk shop into a really tasteful interior shop, and that's had a massive difference. in the market have the new stalls bought in the cash we've made over 200 pounds in so far that's brilliant and you've got about another four hours to go yeah keep it up girls keep Thank it you up you wonderful how's burger bear how's your morning been fabulous oh wonderful well, i sold out basically <laughs> so i'm now using i'm now using tomorrow's stock for today that's brilliant where are you going? Oh. Don't think you're having a break. I'm going for a walk down the market. See what do you what, think? What? We've been so busy that I haven't really had much chance to go and <laughs> see down the market. It's been fantastic. Right, it's great. It's been great. We've had such a positive response. And, and, and actually chatting with another, the chap that actually runs the, the calf down yeah. there that we sometimes sit in, and he says today, of any day, you see new faces. But not everyone's benefiting from the crowds. Hey, how's it gone, Mario? No, it's quiet today. Is it quiet? It's not oh, is it, is it the quiet. rain? Oh. oh, my God, look at Adnan. I tried to do this stall. Like, Adnan! I know Adnan's eating his lunch. And look at the state of that at the front. I try and give him some little display cases. Look what he's codged. How have you done? You have uh, 30 pounds only. Well, let me think why. What is there's a saying? You can bring a horse to water, isn't there? See you later. And this is going to take a few years. And it's going to take rooting out the stalls that won't make it in the future and actually running this like a business, deciding what is needed to make this commercial. And that is going to take a long while. It's not going to happen overnight. But I know the people that will make it happen, the Residents Action Group. I've lobbied the council to agree to an even greater role for the residents in helping run the market of the future, the market they want. How are you all? Good. I can't tell you how excited I am. It, to me, already, I can see a new audience. I've just put these guys in thinking, would it work? And look at his packs. You'll see the young designer bit as well, packs already. 
So what I want and was hoping is that you guys work out what the mix should be so there's a balance of the old, because there's some really old ones that are brilliant, Lindy's fashion store. Some are downright a bloody mess and sh I believe shouldn't be on here and they're letting the side down. When I arrived, I was so saddened to realise the fact that when the Olympics was on, they didn't even put this on the map. And my goal would be that we have this back on the map within a year. And I really do think we can do it. Yeah. So I guess it's me handing over the baton to you guys. Right, it's yeah. baton taken. That's why it's important, though. That's why it's going to work. That's yeah. why it is going to work, because you care. Good luck. Brilliant. Take Thank care. I've organised a good old East End knees up to attract the crowds and at the heart of it, Reedy, the face of the Roman road. So you were a dancer? Yeah. If it's a dance floor, you can do it in beats. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what do you think of the market today? Do you like it? I think that'd be a Isn't it? Isn't that good? I love it. To me. Ah, oh, the good old days are here again. <laughs> Happy days. Fun. That was such fun. Yeah. <laughs>